Okay, Q and A. Tammy James. D more. I don't have my glass on, so I'm having a hard time reading this. So I hope I don't trash people's names too bad. I think it's D more. Is it a flaw for a Frenchie to have a slight bow in their front legs? Well, I mean, anything that is off the standard would be a flaw. Are you likely to have a flawless French bulldog? Are they talking about the ones that look like bullies where their elbows yeah, probably. are out? Pro 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 I think so, That's yes. That's not a Frenchie, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, so, so back to what I was saying. Look, every dog is gonna have a flaw somewhere. So let's not reject a dog because there's something, a single thing. Let's look at the whole thing together. So I think what we're talking about here is when we say a bow, it's a dog that's bowed out like this, where it's got this more of a bulldog stance. There are people who like this. I'm, they tend to be bigger dogs, and it's not what it's, I'm not. Tammy and I are not fans of that, mm -hmm. but we don't want to knock other people's dogs because there are people who absolutely want to breed that. Well, what does your vet say about it? Well, I mean, that's I, another thing. It um, may be too bowed. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So strain maybe on the elbows. Yeah. Maybe something that's not right. Physically right. I mean, if if you've got a bigger dog and it's got more of this bigger chest, it may have this and it's probably fine. Mm. If you've got a really small dog that has that, then I'd say that's not mm. fine. So just remember that whatever you don't like, you're gonna breed into any dogs that you produce. So just mm. find a dog as the mate to this that accentuates this the other way if possible. If we don't want to have one already looking like that, don't buy it. Yes, yes, no, this is, this is, this, yes, yes, okay. is the problem with no tail my girl has the same tail as the boy in this video I can't see the video well okay let's talk about let's talk about we're talking about Frenchies now talk about tails on French tell me what kind of tail do you like to see on a Frenchie I like a little bit of a tail yep. About, yep. about an inch right inch and a half yes that's it so if you so the the problems are an, a, a non-existent tail it's called an inverted tail that's where, not counting the hair that's on it Right, where there actually can be, you know, there's actually a kind of a cavity there. That can cause problems, um, you know, with, with infections and things like that. So that's something that we'd rather not have. It's not the end of the world, but it's certainly not desirable. A tail that's this long, that's too much tail. That's definitely too much tail. And a tail that's kind of corkscrewed around, some people say, well, that's, they worried because the spine might be like that. I can't believe that's possibly anything to do with the spine at all. Because if the spine was like curled up like that, the dog wouldn't even be walking. So I don't think a corkscrew tail is not desirable. I don't think that's a huge negative. What I like to see is just a little bit of tail, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of tail so the dog can actually kind of move their tail around and you can actually see that they're happy because their tail's moving, but not enough that it's gonna smack you in the face. Mm -hmm. Would that be fair enough? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Yeah, but remember an inch, inch and a half without the hair, okay? You want the hair on it, but I'm saying subtract the hair. Yeah, get rid of the hair. Yeah. It's actually the, part, the bony part. If you got part. one with the tail that long. It's too much. That's too much. Yeah, that's a couple of inches. Yeah. So yeah. preferably, I, I'd say an inch. That's like three inches. That is. I've been telling Tammy that as long as time. James, you're so gross. <laughs> if that's three inches, I you don't know. You can tell he's old. Oh, dear. And what is it when people talk about it a lot? What uh, is it? Yeah. Wishful okay. thinking. Yeah. Um, South Wales, again, I have my glass on fishing maybe. Anyway, can you breed a Lilac Merle Platinum American Bully to another Platinum Bully? And also what if it Why has not? pied? Yeah, of course. There's no reason not to, to, to uh, put a Platinum with a Platinum. You Fine, you get all Platinum. Breed cream, creams to creams. Get all creams. Yep. Breed platinums to platinums because you're going to get some of them that are solid lilacs. And then they said, what if it's a pie? So the thing, tans, the, I mean. the, the thing, the danger here is you don't want to breed an extreme pied right. to a dog that will produce more pieds. And so a platinum dog could actually be an extreme pied and he wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. Because remember, cream covers everything up. Now, somebody called me on that the other day and said, uh, on one of the videos actually, and said, that a pied cream has splotches on it. I haven't seen it both ways. I, I, 
the, the, so what I'm bringing up here is, is that you could run into a situation where you've got a dog that's in fact a stream, an extreme pied and you wouldn't know it. You bred it back to another platinum that actually carries pied and you wouldn't know it unless you did a DNA. And then you could be in a situation you could get extreme pieds. It's pretty unlikely, but I guess it's possible. Crystal Ardilla says, so if I breed my cream female with a fluffy stud, half a litter will carry fluffy. Nope, it's better than that. They'll all carry fluffy. If you put a full fluffy dog with a non-fluffy dog, all the litter will carry a copy of fluffy. If you put a fluffy carrier dog with a non-fluffy dog, half the litter will carry fluffy. If you put a fluffy carrier dog with a fluffy carrier dog, then you will get one quarter full fluffies, one half fluffy carriers, and one quarter not fluffies at all. So there you go. Tammy's fixing to get out to do some shopping. You can leave me the keys. Uh, because I think that was there. Oh, here we go. So a nice thing here. Someone says I love Solo. Um, I used Solo for my girl last litter. I had six beautiful babies. Bailey, I kept as a cream girl with a white spot on it. Well, good, good. We love it when people keep doggies from one of our breedings. Yeah. Someone's asking. Uh, I can't read the writing. Ezreal. Is Aranus, I think. She's asking about DNA, or this person's asking about DNA. So the DNA is little b, little b, that's testable chocolate. Little d, little d, that's blue. Little e, little e, that's cream. A, Y, A, T is a copy of 10 points. Is that an Isabella? You bet your money that's an Isabella. That's an Isabella. Now make sure that you've got the right test here, that that really is little b, little b, because I've made this mistake on our website. I've got quite a few dogs that says they're little b, little b, and they're actually little co, little co. So make sure this really is a little b, little b dog. If it is, that's an Isabella. That's an expensive dog. Yeah, can I have your glasses too? I have to have my glasses. All right, look at them. That's what you get for forgetting your glasses. How can you tell from red eye glow for a lilac? Okay. So the red eye glow, uh, there's, there's two places you're going to get red eye glow. The first thing is, how do you find the red eye glow? And the answer is, let me keys. Oh, no. Is, is that red eye glow is going to be, I'm just going to move this around because Tammy's leaving us. Bye, Tammy. There you go. Okay. So a red eye glow is, um, there's a, well, to find the red eye glow, you can't just take a picture. If you take a picture with a flash, that will show red eye glow in humans and all kinds of things. So that's not the way to do it. You've got to take a video with your camera, with your, with your smartphone camera light on. So you've got to be um, in this situation. Yeah. See my light? Yeah, you can't see it very well, unfortunately, but I'll try and show you my light. Anyway, you've got to be in a situation where you're camera light is on you're taking a video and you've got to view the video to see this and then what you're looking for is a center of the eye will look red on a young puppies four or five weeks old you may not see it then you'll start seeing it four or five eight ten weeks where you can see there's kind of a crimsony area in the middle of the eye and then when they get fully grown it will be absolutely demonic looking in that video you won't see it so easily with your eyes you've got to have a phone to see this and you've got to have the phone camera light on all right, so that's the red eye glow. Now, who shows the red eye glow? Moral dogs, regardless of their color, are likely to show the red eye glow. So it's not a good test for a moral dog. But any other dog that shows that has got either two copies of little b, two copies of little co, or both. So they are chocolate dogs. So, so the question goes back to the, the question was a lilac dog. Well, a lilac dog is a little d, little d, little co, little co. And that dog will show a red eye glow and it will look, it, it, you'll know that it's a lilac because it'll look gray blue color and not chocolate. If it wasn't a lilac and had a red eye glow, it'd look chocolate. And if it's an Isabella, it will show up as well. And if it's what's called a new shade, which is both versions of chocolate, it'll show up as well as a red eye glow. So that was a long winded answer to that question. Okay, now going back to this next question. Uh, let's see, I'll start reading this because I don't have my glasses. Cassie Chrisman says, hello. How would I find a BB puppy? So say I found a breeder 
How would I ask, what would I ask for the find a chocolate brown puppy? Because I want to breed it to another BB and continue to get brown and try and only breed brown, no other colors, no other colors in the litter. Okay, so I'm gonna treat this like you're talking about two different kinds of chocolate so that you don't make a mistake on this because there's a big difference between a BB dog, little B, little B, that's what we call testable chocolate versus a little CO, little CO dog is what we used to call untestable chocolate because you couldn't do a test for it, but we can now as of about a year and a half, and now we call it a cocoa dog. They both are chocolate, but remember that chocolate can show itself in a number of different ways and it, sometimes it can be hard to tell that a dog is chocolate. For instance, a chocolate fawn dog might almost look cream. Um, a chocolate brindle dog might almost look blue. So. But in all these cases, whether it has two copies, this is the last question again, we, before this we spoke about this, two copies of CO or two copies of little B, or the combination of little CO, little CO, little B, little B, ends up with a chocolate colored dog. If you want to get the other colors out there, then you better make sure that neither dog has two copies of, or a copy of blue, for instance. If you get a single copy of blue in the puppies, it won't show. But if you have two copies of blue, it will show and it becomes a lilac. If you had a single copy of E, cream, you're okay. If the puppies get two copies of cream, they end up looking cream and they'll be chocolate hidden completely. Uh, Genevieve McCullough says, so Sir, Sir Humplot seems to be uh, really friendly. He is, but that's a Frenchy thing too. So, I mean, we don't have any aggressive dogs whatsoever at all. And we've got a number of Frenchy boys and a, and a few Frenchy girls, and none of them aggressive. The only time I ever see any kind of aggression in French Bulldogs is if you've got possibly a fight over food, uh, possibly a fight over a female that's in heat. So those are the times that we're a little bit more cautious about putting our boys out all together. But the rest of the time, everybody coexists just fine. And they are always, and I mean always, nice towards humans. All of our dogs are always nice towards cats but they've been around them too. But but I, if you haven't been around a French, French Bulldog, they are really a fabulous breed. I and mean, they've got a great personality and they're very loving dogs. Uh, someone's saying that we make them laugh. Okay, well, thank you. So ultrasound says I only have one puppy after 30 days, William Barkley. So let's see what the replies say. <laughs> Somebody says then you only have one pup then. Oh, well, okay, so here's, here's the thing on this. Just because the ultrasound shows that you have a single puppy doesn't mean that you're having one puppy. It would normally, but you absolutely can have a big fat zero puppies because it can get absorbed and you can have more than one puppy because they don't see them all. So, you know, the most likely thing is, is that you unfortunately are going to have a small litter of a single puppy. And the reason for that, by the way, is probably because you didn't get your timing right doing the AI is the most likely reason. But, um, you know, if you're going to have a C-section and you've got a, you know, if you've got a C-section with a single puppy, you may not even know the dog's pregnant. I would do an X-ray four or five days before the C-section to make sure that there is a, a puppy in there. You do not want to go through a C-section to find that there's no puppies in present. And uh, if you're going to do a natural work, which we don't recommend our French Bulldog, definitely do an x-ray to make sure the size of that, because a single puppy can be a big fat puppy. It's getting all the nourishment in the world. That is the recipe for a big puppy. And you think to yourself, oh, a single puppy, I can have a C-section. That is probably one of the most dangerous situations because you've now got one big puppy and then just flat can't come out. And uh, that puppy dies in the process. So be very careful on that. And that is it for this session. Thanks for watching. Everybody. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.